Hi Brodies, Marvin here from TechBureau.com where we do unboxings, reviews, and sexy bureaus. And today we're going to build a relatively affordable custom keyboard featuring the Tom 680 barebones kit. For this build, I'm going to use the TTC gold and brown switches that I got from Bango.com. In this video, we're also going to do a sound comparison between the stock configuration and the modified version with lubed and tuned stabilizers. I'm also going to use one of the cheapest SAPBT keycaps available out in the market. With that being said, let's get into it. Alright guys, like some of my custom builds, I also live stream this on our Facebook page. So if you want some early access or if you don't want to miss out, make sure to follow me there. Now, let's start with the unboxing experience. I got the Tom 680 barebones kit from Lazada and I purchased it myself. At that time, the price was 3,150 pesos, but now I think it's just around 2,900 pesos. I also saw a couple of listings in Shopee that are cheaper. I'll put some links below so that you can check it out, but buy at your own risk, check ratings and user feedback to make sure. Now, the packaging is pretty generic as you can tell, with just a black box with no branding whatsoever. Inside the box, we have a user manual written in both English and Chinese. Next, we have a small accessory box right here and the Tom 680 barebone kit itself nicely protected by a bubble wrap. We also have a wire keycap puller right here which is a nice bonus. It looks almost the same as my CIY keycap puller right here. Inside this small accessory box, we have the braided USB Type-C cable. Since the Tom 680 keyboard is a wired only keyboard, at least for the variant that I have right here. At first look and touch, the Tom 680 feels, well, plastic, but with some decent weight to it. It also doesn't flex at all, thanks to the hard plastic casing and the aluminum plate. It weighs roughly around 527 grams. In terms of the layout, this keyboard features an exploded 65% form factor with exactly 67 keys, and if you include the encoder, a total of 68 keys. With this layout, we have dedicated arrow keys and three extra keys on the right side. Some people deem this as a budget GMMK Pro keyboard simply because of the layout and the knob, but to be honest, it is far from that in almost every aspect. But I get what they're saying. If you need some extra keys and a volume knob, then yes, the Tom 680 is a good budget alternative. Now, the volume knob is made out of plastic with a little bit of wobble, but not entirely bad, I would say. It also has a translucent lining around it for illumination. The funny thing here is that some people joke about it looking like a toothpaste cap or an old washing machine knob, which I think is really hilarious. Honestly, I don't mind its look given its price, but I feel like the legend on its side is quite unnecessary since the functionality of a volume knob is pretty much self-explanatory. Right here, we have some LED indicators. And then flipping it on its side, we have this sort of futuristic curved design with a small cutout that has a translucent cover for side illumination. Next, flipping it at the back side, we have the USB Type-C port here on the right side. And then right here at the center, we have a sort of grill type design with a translucent cover as well for the same illumination. So we have a total of three spots where light could shine through. Now here at the bottom, we have four silicon rubber feet. One thing that I'm not happy about is that out of the box, my unit right here has some dirt marks as you can see, which is very apparent on this white casing. But overall, the design and build quality are pretty decent for its price. The same quality that you could expect from budget pre-built keyboards around 3,000 pesos or so. Now looking at the stabilizers, these are plate mount stabs and at first look, it doesn't seem to have any pre-applied lube. However, as per Paul from Tech2Poly, it has some pre-applied lube but only on the wires. Later, we'll do some sound comparison between the stock stabs and the wholly modded version. Now, tearing this keyboard apart is pretty easy. The first step is to remove all the screws on the plate. I suggest you place all of them together on a container. Next, gently lift up the top cover as you can see here, and it is fairly easy to remove actually. So here's the bottom case with some diffusers around the sides. Some viewers suggested to me that I add some EVA foam, so that's exactly what I'm going to do later. Now, looking at the PCB, I wasn't really able to tell which manufacturer made the hot swap sockets, but it's not Kale or Gateron for sure, though it looks exactly the same. The PCB and the components for the most part are soldered pretty decently. Removing the PCB from the plate and top housing is also pretty straightforward, but a little trickier. First, remove the black screws around the PCB, lift off the PCB gently a little bit, then pry the clips that lock the plate on the top housing. So here's the encoder with some surface mounted LEDs around it. Once all the locking clips are pressed or lifted, you can now remove the plate from the top housing. Now what's good about this is that this keyboard already came with the plate foam, so the only foam we need to add later is for the bottom case. 
Of course, that is optional depending on your preference. Adding an EVA foam is pretty easy as well. Just cut it in size, place it firmly on the bottom case, poke the standoffs, and cut out the part where the light diffusers are located. I'll put some links below on where I got my EVA foam so that you can check it out. Now, all that is left is to assemble all of this together so that you can install the switches and the keycaps. Obviously, you don't need to tear this keyboard apart if you're not planning on adding an EVA foam. Okay, so for the switches, I'm going to use the TTC Gold and Brown switches, but really, this is more like a brown and orange colorway, which is the reason why I picked this. Because I want to build a brown and orange themed keyboard. These TTC Gold and Brown switches feature almost the exact same specifications of a typical brown switch, at least on paper, with an actuation force required of 55 grams and a total travel distance of 2 to 4 millimeters. The only significant difference that I can think of aside from the colorway is that the TTC Gold and Brown switches have a slightly better rounded bump, resulting in a snappier tactile feel. These are 3 pin plate mount switches, by the way, though the TOM680 also supports 5 pin PCB mount switches. Now, for the keycaps, I'm going to use two sets of these cheap SAPBD keycaps that I got from Shopee. A set that only costs around 800 pesos, which is insanely cheap, but it also comes with some drawbacks, most notably the taller height on some rows. But if you can live with that or at least can adjust to that shortcomings, then these set of keycaps are really a bang for the buck. I actually did a separate video for these keycaps, which you can check out here. Now, I decided to use two sets to come up with a brown and orange theme and to also accommodate the 67 key layout of this keyboard with a 1.75U right shift, which I had to use another 1.75U caps lock to make this build complete. I also decided to add some icing on the cake by adding a rogue artisan keycaps from Bucky's, a local artisan keycap maker here in the Philippines. Check the link below if you're interested. Overall, I'm quite satisfied with the finished build. I think it looks pretty awesome with this brown and orange colorway partnered with a clean white chassis. Everything works well, all the keys are functioning as expected, and the lighting around the keyboard gives it more character. The typing experience with this TTC Gold and Brown switches is also fairly decent, especially after lubing the switches. It has a decent amount of tactile feedback, more than what a typical Gutter or Cherry MX Brown can offer, while still having that relatively soft and lightweight 55 grams actuation force. This layout is also one of the best layouts you could pick up, especially if you're into productivity with dedicated arrow keys, some extra keys on the sides, and a volume knob. If the function row is not that important to you, then this is a better and more compact option than a 75% keyboard. Build quality-wise, it is pretty decent for its price, and though it is made mostly out of plastic, including the volume knob, it doesn't feel that cheap at all compared to what I was initially expecting when I saw the images online. Functionality-wise, it has perky RGB lighting effects and lighting around the keyboard that you can adjust using some key combinations with the F and key. However, if you want to remap some keys, you may need to download the software, which to be honest, I didn't bother at all because to be able to get the software, you'll have to join the seller's Discord server and get it from there because they cannot simply put the link on Lazada as it is being flagged as a virus. I also tried asking owners of Tom680 on our Facebook community, and while I trust our members that the software is legit, I decided to go with a safer route of just not using it. I actually tried downloading it, but Google Chrome and Windows simply didn't allow me to. Now, I can bypass that for sure, but like I said, I went with a safer route since I don't really need the software to be able to use this keyboard properly, and I also don't want to recommend something that I'm not 100% sure, so there's that. Other than that, I can still recommend the Tom680 for what it's worth out of the box, given its price point and everything it has to offer, with its good compact layout, hot swappable board, and dedicated volume knob. And to end this video, here's a sound comparison between a stock Tom680 build and with lubed switches and holy modded stabilizers.
And there you have it guys. Thank you for watching. Huge thanks to Bango.com for providing the TTC Gold and Brown switches. You can get these from the links below alongside all the components including the Tom 680 Barebones kit. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you like this and see you next time. Have a great day guys. You're awesome.